Namaste and welcome to Retail Investing. So HDFC Bank is going to be the topic for this video. Now anybody in between age 8 and age 80 already knows that it's a good company, it's a good business, it's a good stock and a relatively safe investment. You, you do not need a research analyst to tell you that it's a good business. Uh, the point of this video is to try and find out whether the valuations have become cheap or not because uh, a good business uh, becomes visible to almost anybody but to detect cheapness you actually require some skills and a lot of research so uh, uh, HDFC Bank uh, we are going to try to uh, have a look at the valuations and uh, it is uh, let me tell you that it is the largest stock as of now it uh, it makes up its weightage in the nifty 50 is almost 14 percent and uh, it is followed by Reliance. Reliance Industries is a distant second whose weightage is uh, just below 10%. It is 9.5%, I believe. Now, uh, the, the quarterly results, the recent quarterly results uh, have been published a few days ago. Now, we are going to have a look at some of the numbers briefly. Uh, but before that, uh, I would like to share with you my personal, uh, in my personal experience with the stock. Uh, I actually ended up investing in HDFC uh, and uh, I remember it was in November of 2021 the stock was trading at around 1540 in between 1530 and 1540 when I started uh, buying the stock and uh, the reason the reason I ended up investing uh, was because uh, there were some experts whom I know in the uh, whom I know personally and uh, their uh, their stand on the stock was that uh, it had tested its resistance levels of 1680 uh, almost a month ago and uh, the thought process was that uh, once a fundamentally strong company uh, it breaks the resistance level with good volumes it should sustain above that level and it should continuously trade above that level and uh, for that reason uh, I, I bought the stock and uh, what followed uh, was quite sad I mean the stock price uh, continuously kept correcting from 1530 it fell to 1500 then to 1450 1400 and uh, eventually it came down as low as uh, 1200 levels but uh, what I did was I kept uh, I kept downward averaging in the stock and I held it uh, until the June of 2023 so it was roughly 18 months and uh, in June 2023 the stock uh, reached its all-time high of around 1700 and uh, I sold it so it was uh, it was 21% roughly 21% profit in 18 months uh, and uh, this is not at all impressive I mean uh, this uh, this was my experience with so-called momentum investing uh, price action breakout uh, trading whatever you want to call it and uh, after you make 21% gains you have to pay the capital gains taxes and the brokerage and all the other fees associated with, with churning your portfolio so uh, yeah that was my experience now uh, we share with you some of the numbers from the latest quarterly earnings report uh, so uh, i have uh, noted down some of the numbers i'll be briefly sharing them with you so the net interest income is an extremely uh, important metric for evaluating any bank any finance stock and for HDFC Bank, the net interest income uh, has gone up 16% compared to the previous quarter. And the net revenues have also gone up 16% compared to the previous quarter. Um, that's a good sign. The profit after tax, it has gone up 33.7% compared to the previous quarter. I mean, uh, this is huge. It has beaten the expectations of almost all professional analysts. And this is probably the reason uh, why we witnessed uh, heavy buying recently in the stock uh, I mean before Monday until until the the last Friday uh, because on uh, Monday some bad news came in and the markets uh, reacted very badly so price to book value uh, which is uh, another very important metric of valuation for any bank or any finance company for HDFC bank the price to book value is 2.93 and uh, it is uh, I, for HDFC Bank, 
it is uh, at a very low level i think uh, it, it is at the lowest level in uh, more than a decade and that's what i could found out uh, it's uh, non-performing assets uh, are at extremely low levels i mean uh, i think uh, it's non-performing assets are one of the lowest of any major bank uh, it's uh, balance sheet has expanded uh, by roughly 53 percent as it was expected now the strategy behind the merger uh, was was to create a huge balance sheet now uh, when a when a very big balance sheet gets created what happens is that they are going to have access to extremely low cost funds now um, the basic of the business is that uh, they they are going to borrow money at low interest rates and they are going to lend the money at higher interest rates and uh, that's how they get their margins now their balance sheet is uh, one of the largest i think it is only second after state bank of india's balance sheet and uh, their casa ratio has actually fallen uh, in this quarterly report um, they are, so the casa ratio only banks are actually allowed to uh, take casa deposits the current accounts and the savings accounts the the nbfc part of the business bef before the merger uh, the housing finance they were not allowed to uh, take current accounts and saving accounts deposits so all the casa that uh, that has happened that we are seeing here are hdfc banks i mean prior to the merger they were they came from the hdfc bank uh, so that that is the reason that the casa ratio has fallen and uh, if we look at all these quarterly numbers uh, they're actually looking uh, very good but uh, we should take that with a little grain of salt i would say because because of this merger what has happened uh, base effect is coming into play and uh, this base effect uh, is making uh, all these figures look a little bit inflated in my opinion and uh, but uh, that's completely normal i mean uh, the the merger was done for a purpose and uh, the market i mean how the market is going to react uh, we have to wait and watch returns can uh, so what kind of returns can retail investors expect from this stock uh, definitely not multi bagger returns it is uh, hdfc is a um, is the largest stock as of now and it is already one of the largest banks in the entire world so the returns uh, you cannot expect uh, small cap level returns uh, from this kind of a stock uh, but uh, before uh, we talk about the kind of returns I think uh, we should uh, fix in our mind what kind of uh, holding periods uh, we are looking at. Uh, I mean, a five-year holding period uh, for this stock, I think uh, it's uh, it's way shorter than optimal, because uh, what the we need to look, we need to understand what the management is saying and what their plans are. The management uh, is saying that they plan to create a new HDFC bank every three to four years, and for that they are going to create 1500 plus new branches now um, the management themselves are giving a three to four year time period for that uh, and uh, we don't know how the market is going to react to that uh, i mean uh, when the market will start you know acknowledging hdfc bank as the um, as the king of all banks because as of now uh, the market uh, market does not like the uncertainty regarding this merger and uh, it is uh, visible from the fact that in the last three to four years, the stock has not moved an inch. Uh, but the numbers, if you look at the annual reports, uh, the numerous quarterly reports, the numbers have moved more than an inch and they have consistently moved upwards. So this uh, creates, uh, this indicates that undervaluation is ha has happened in the stock. And the valuations, uh, I think it is becoming more and more attractive with each passing day. And uh, now, so yeah, um, back to holding period. I think the minimum holding period for this stock uh, should be seven to ten years, because uh, because the main returns, the main benefits of this merger, uh, if they ever come, they are going to come after five years, after seven years. Uh, that's what I understand that's what is my assessment of the current scenario and uh, the stock i mean on monday yesterday uh, there was a heavy selling in the market across all sectors and hdfc also corrected a lot uh, which made it even 
even cheaper and now um, i don't know when the markets open tomorrow how um, i mean uh, what how the market is going to react to hdfc bank and uh, how much selling will be there uh, consi uh, constantly bad news have been coming from the middle east the war is raging over there and uh, there are dangers of other countries getting involved in the war and it's it's not good news for the middle east it's not good news for india it's not good news for the stock market and it's not good news for uh, retail investors definitely so we have to wait and watch how the markets uh, react in the next few trading days and uh, i think uh, and another thing that i would like to point out is that uh, i would like to talk a little about bajaj finance over here because uh, it looks like that hdfc um, is planning to compete against bajaj finance somehow i mean bajaj finance if you look at the last uh, few years uh, returns uh, the returns have been stellar i mean uh, the stock has given almost small cap kind of returns in the last uh, few years and uh, it has been bajaj finance has been the darling of all fund managers of all money managers and uh, and at the same time uh, they are not liking hdfc bank now that is the current situation uh, you cannot be certain that uh, it will continue in the future because hdfc bank uh, i mean they are planning they are planning to do very aggressive lending uh, i mean in spaces where bajaj finance uh, usually dominates like uh, financing of consumer electronics and consumer durables and uh, bajaj finance i would say uh, is becoming a little desperate in my opinion uh, recently they were uh, talking about raising 1 billion dollars which is roughly 8000 crore rupees and they plan to raise that money uh, because uh, they are borrowing that money and the goal is to lend that money at higher interest rates and that's how they do business that's how they get their margins Uh, and hdfc already has access uh, access to to a huge pool of low cost funds uh, for borrowing so uh, it's very i mean i am not an investor in either stock and i don't have plans to invest in either of them but it's very interesting uh, to to watch how the situation unfolds in the future and uh, how the market is going to react to hdfc uh, roughly 3 to 4 years from now now um, if we talk about the worst case scenario about hdfc bank i think the worst thing that could happen is that the stock might keep underperforming in the next 2 3 years uh, in the same way it has underperformed in the past uh, past 3 4 years despite its numbers continuous uh, consistently improving i mean that is the worst case scenario the uh, next 3 4 years uh, until their uh, until the effects of this merger um comes into play and uh, but that's the worst case scenario i think in a normal scenario uh, the stock should uh, should perform better than it has performed in the last 3 to 4 years uh, in the next one year uh, i think uh, yeah i think it should uh, definitely perform better than it has performed in the last 3 to 4 years uh, now um, now please don't consider any of this as a buy or sell recommendation this video was uh, only and only for educational purposes if you found anything valuable please like and share uh, and if you don't want to miss future videos on fundamental analysis and stocks analysis please subscribe and dashera ki bahut sari shubhkamnaye aap sabko and i'll see you in the next one jai hind